Hello, my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a video that I have been talking about for a while and I'm so, so excited to finally be doing it because I feel like I've just been talking about it and I haven't done it and I have done my research, I've compiled what I want to talk about and I'm here to do this video today. So you may be wondering, what is this video that I am speaking of? And that is my video on adult fantasy romances that I want to read. Recently, I've just been on this cake where I've read a few adult fantasy romances and I feel like it's really my genre that I'm really enjoying. And so I really want to explore the genre it's also worthwhile to note that a lot of the genre is independently published and a lot of it is just on Kindle, especially Kindle Unlimited. And so I think I'm going to get a Kindle Unlimited subscription and start reading a bunch of these because I feel like they're not something that are mainstream talked about and I want to start to read some of them and to bring the recommendations of the best ones to you guys so we can share the love for this like kind of emerging genre. So I have done my research. I'm going to include two that I've read and the rest are going to be ones that I haven't read, but I have eight in total fantasy ro adult fantasy romance series that I want to read. And I'm so, so excited about this because the books that I have read in this genre have been phenomenal. And these ones that I have picked out for myself to read in the future, I think are going to be really good. I have really high hopes. And I don't know, I just feel like really excited about it. And to start off, I guess I would be remiss not to talk about what exactly is fantasy romance. And I was looking at Goodreads actually has an official description for it, which I'm not gonna read word for word, but basically paraphrased is that it is either a romance, so like a romance novel, we all know what romance novels are, um, that has a lot of fantasy elements or a fantasy novel that has a very huge romantic plot and kind of everything else is the subplot and kind of basically what this Goodreads description was talking about, and I will link the page down below because you can search some of the fantasy romances on there yourself, um, but basically what this page was saying about the genre is that these two kind of distinctions have kind of melded together, so then you get some that are more heavily fantasy based but have like a huge romantic subplot and something like that I would consider the A Court of Thorns and Roses series by Sarah J Maas, or you have ones that are more like based in the romance genre but have they're set in like a fantasy setting. So I think it's really cool that these two kind of genres are kind of coming together to meet in the middle and it's something that I really enjoy and again like I said I'm just so excited to be reading these books and kind of you know bringing to light the ones that deserve attention. I will also mention that I do think that there are some books that are more on the YA side that I could have put in this video but I didn't because I wanted to focus on things that were more in the new adult adult genre but if I were to include the ones that were more like YA-ish, although sometimes they do kind of straddle the line, I would consider those books to be things like A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Maas, uh, Serpent and Dove by Shelby Morin, and the Furyborn series by Claire Legrand. So you can check those out if you're looking for some that focus more on the YA side and maybe there could be like YA fantasy romance video that I do in the future, I don't know. Let me know if you would like to see that. We have someone trying to get in my video. What you doing? <laughs> special guest appearance for the day. So I think if you have been, you know, following me for the past few months, you will be about 0% surprised about this first book series that I'm about to pull out. This is kind of the series that started me on this whole journey into this genre, and that is From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout, as well as its sequel, A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire. And the third one, A Crown of Gilded Bones, is coming out in April, which is just the perfect birthday present for me, I think, because... You know, I love the series. And both of these books came out in 2020. Look at how big they are. And Jennifer L. Armitage also had a third book come out in 2020. So like that just amazes me that she can write that fast. And because she does go through like independent or indie publishers, she can just like churn out books a lot quicker, I think. Just because of, you know, the way that those publishers work. But yes, this series is my everything. It's my everything. I mean, look at it. So this one I read on Kindle, so it doesn't have annotations, but obviously when I reread it, it's going to be annotated. And this one is just like annotated the heck up. Oh my god, I love this series so much, but I haven't even said what it's about. So Miss Jennifer L. Armentrout is like famous in the YA community for having some really good YA 
romances like paranormal romance the luxe series which is like her big one and this is actually her first foray into the fantasy like high fantasy genre and it is so good i'm honestly like my mind is blown how good it is so there is a maiden chosen from birth to usher in a new era poppy's life has never been her own as a maiden she is never to be touched never to be spoken to never to speak and of course never to experience pleasure all she's doing is waiting for the day of her ascension but she would rather be with the guards fighting to protect her homeland and those that she loves she has a duty the entire kingdom's future rests on her shoulders but this is not a fate that poppy is even sure that she wants because a maiden has a heart and a soul when Hawk, a golden-eyed guard duty-bound to ensure her ascension, enters her life, he awakens something in her. And destiny and duty become entangled with need and desire. He incites her anger and makes her question everything that she believes in. However, a fallen kingdom is once again rising and determined to take back what they believe is theirs through violence and bloodshed. As the shadow of those cursed draws closer, the line between what is forbidden and what is right becomes blurred. I mean, this book is just so well done and it just has such great feminist commentary as well because it talks about the concept of basically like virginity and purity being used as a method to control women and i just like i love poppy's character i love hawk i love the banter like the romance steamy delicious but also like it has such a really intricate and um well thought out world building and plot and i'm so so excited to see where the series goes because the second book ended on this huge cliffhanger that i literally like almost threw my book across the room so there we go so yeah that is the first one on my list and of course like just read this book i'm obsessed with it i will never stop talking about it it's probably my top book of 2020 so those those are my feelings next up are, is a book that i have already read and that is going to be the fortuna sworn series by kj sutton and we have fortuna sworn and restless slumber i mean look at these covers super beautiful the next one deadly dreams is out in december so of course i'll be picking up a copy when that comes out and apparently there's also hardcovers releasing soon which i will be purchasing and i love this book it's a dark fairy book but what's really interesting about it is it brings in a creature that I've never heard of in like, you know, typical fantasy lore and that's called a nightmare, which is really cool. And they're basically these creatures that can, um, they if they touch you, they can sense your deepest fears and they can like weave illusions of your nightmares. Um, but what's also interesting is that they're meant to be like super seductive to lure humans in and basically if like a human looks at them, they see like the most beautiful face like whatever face would be the most beautiful to them so it's really really interesting fortuna sworn is the last of her kind her brother disappeared two years ago leaving her all alone she hides among the humans spending her days working at a bar and her nights searching for her brother however when she is kidnapped by some goblins and brought to a black market she encounters a really powerful fairy that offers her a bargain that she cannot refuse in exchange for fortuna this fairy offers something irresistible and so fortuna reluctantly leaves her safe existence behind to step back into the world of creatures and power and it seems to become clear she did not only bargain with her heart but with her very life and this romance is just like really good it's not necessarily like enemies to lovers but they're in kind of like their motives are very different from one another and it's really interesting to see like how these two come together and like so much happened in this book and especially in this second book for like the development of their romance and i really enjoyed the you know the tension between the two main characters and so this one has made the list this next book is not one that i have read yet but i have purchased it because it looked really good and that is the bridge kingdom by danielle l jensen and i literally uh on my last video i talked about this what did i what video was i talking about this in i can't remember what video i was talking about this in but someone did comment on that video and said that this is like their favorite book and they reread it three times and they already love it and i feel like to, for you to like reread something three times in a day each time and love it that much like it has to be good you know so one kingdom to save one kingdom to destroy and i love this cover art style it's really cool okay <clears throat> and then the tagline is what if you fell in love with the one person you'd sworn to destroy so yes we have a classic example of enemies to lovers here what i'm all about laura has only one thought for her husband on her wedding day and that is i will bring your kingdom to its knees 
She has been trained since childhood to be a lethal spy and being a princess, she is sent to the Bridge Kingdom in order to fulfill a peace treaty and become a wife of one of the princes. Serving as the only route through a storm ravaged world, the Bridge Kingdom controls everything from trade to travel and their ruler is corrupt and greedy and takes everything for himself while the other surrounding kingdoms suffer. However, as Laura comes to know her new husband, Aaron, she begins to question where the true evil really resides. Her mission brings her closer to understanding the fight to possess the bridge, but within her mission, she also finds the simmering tra attraction between her and her husband, Aaron, impossible to ignore. Will she be the destroyer of a king or the savior of her people? I mean like this whole premise just sounds amazing. This art is beautiful. Look at like the chapter headers as well. I'm assuming this is the bridge in the bridge kingdom. Like I love those little touches and yes. And so again, this is a book that is also independently published and it has a sequel called The Traitor Queen, which is out now. Um, so yeah, all these are published by like really like pretty independently indie publishers. She also has the series called The Stolen Song. Bird, or it's called the Malediction Novels, um, the first one being Stolen Songbird, that's also pretty well known. I think that one is YA though, but yes, this one. I am, want to read it soon. The next one on this list I also bought because I cannot resist a pretty cover, and that is A Deal with the Elf King, a Married to the Magic novel by Elise Kova, who has also written the Air Awakened series, which is YA. And um, this book was like just like blowing up all over book Twitter when the cover was announced because if you look underneath it oh my goodness and this is just like the hardcover that you can get from amazon it's not like a special edition or anything like that but are you seeing this look at that throne wow the elves come for two things war and wives and in both they come for death up until 3,000 years ago the humans were hunted by species with wild magic until a treaty was formed that states that the elves can take a young woman from Luella's village to be their human queen. To be chosen is basically to be chosen for death and everyone in the town wants to avoid this fate. Luella, having grown to the age of 19, focuses on herbology and being the, the town's only healer. And because she is 19, she believes that she has escaped this fate. That is until the Elf King comes for her. And everything she thought she knew about her life is basically uprooted. And she's forced to be the new queen, queen to a cold yet blisteringly handsome Elf King. Um, but once there, she learns about a dying world that only she can save. So the magical land of Midscape pulls on one corner of her heart, but her home and her people pull on another. But what will truly break her is a passion she never wanted. And this is actually, it's a standalone novel, and there's going to be different standalone novels in the series. And it's a... Um, it's inspired by the tales of Hades and Persephone, as well as Beauty and the Peace. Did I say Beauty and the Beast? Beauty and the Beast. And it says it's perfect for fantasy romance fans looking for just the right amount of steam in their next slow burn and swoon worthy couple. So right there on the back, she told the people that they are getting what they wanted. The people being me <laughs> and those that are watching this video. Okay, next up on my list is the Bargainer series by Laura Talasa. And this includes the first book, Rhapsodic as well as the sequels, A Strange Hymn and Dark Harmony. Calypso Lilis is a siren with a big problem. For the last seven years, she's been collecting favors in the form of beads on a bracelet that go around her wrist, and every bead stands for a magical favor that she owes someone, and those beads will not go away unless they are repaid or she dies. Everyone knows that the bargainer is who you go to if you want a favor. However, there is one client that he has never called upon until now. And the bargainer, F.A. King, shows up in her room calling upon the many favors that she owes. She knows that things are about to change. At first, all he asks her for is a chaste kiss and a promise of more to come. For the bargainer, it's more than just rekindling an old romance as there is something happening in the other world and he will need the help of a siren if he has any hope of saving his people. I've just heard great things about this book from literally anyone that I've seen read it and I feel like it's a pretty like classic in the fantasy romance genre so I definitely want to get to this soon and I do have the first book on my Kindle. Next 
book that I'm going to talk about is Radiance by Grace Draven and this is the first in the Wraith Kings series followed by the books Edelon, I think that's how you pronounce it, and Ippos King and Grace Draven is pretty much like a very well established author in this genre um, and she has a bunch of series and books. I just included one on this list just for the sake of having a variety but definitely an author to check out and if I like her works she has so many other ones that I can read which makes me super excited. Bershin Coxy? No, that can't be, <laughs> can't be right. Bershin Caxim. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> um, is Prince of the Kai and a non-essential spare heir to a very secure throne. However, a trade and political alliance to the human kingdom of Gower requires that he marry a human woman and ever the dutiful son, he agrees to this political marriage. Soon he discovers that his wife is as ugly as he expected and more beautiful than he could have ever imagined. Interesting. Ildiko. <laughs> <laughs> Ildiko? I don't know how to pronounce her name, I'm sorry. Is a niece of the Gary King and has always assumed that her worth lay in a strategic marriage. However, she could have never imagined that she would be bound to someone that is not even human. And she must leave behind everything she's ever known to embrace a man shrouded in darkness but with a soul forged from light. So yeah, it's really interesting. I think it's going to be interesting to read about a fantasy series with like a marriage and an alliance between two different species of creatures because, you know, one of them is human and one of them is not. And I really do hope that I like this one so that I can read the rest of everything from this author. Okay, next is A Promise of Darkness by Beck McCaster. And shout out to Madison for Princess of Paperback because she sent this to me and I said, Yes, I will put this in my video because she knew that I was compiling this list. And this is number one in the Dark Court Rising series, followed by the books Crown of Darkness and A Curse of Darkness. The Queen of Thorns is determined to destroy her enemy, the cursed prince of the Evernight. And so when the prince forces Queen Adia to uphold a an ancient fairy tradition in which he will hold one of her daughters political hostage for three months in his court. Queen Adia sees this as an opportunity and convinces her daughter that she can end this looming war before it even starts, but Princess V soon realizes that she is definitely not an assassin, especially not when she starts to develop feelings for the prince that is supposed to be her mortal enemy. And the more that she is in his court, the more that she starts to question her mother's motives and where the true evil lies. And so that begs the question, who is the true enemy again? some more dark fairy romances. I feel like fairies are very, very um, common in this genre, which like is almost to be expected because they're such like cunning and conniving creatures. So it's really fun that way. The next book on my list is actually a recent release and that is Kiss the Fae by Natalia Jaster. And she has another series that I've seen around and I think the first book in that series is called Trick, but I wanted to talk about this new release because it seemed cool but I also want to check out her other series. I think I bought the first one on Kindle. I don't know. I just kind of like went on a buying spree of fantasy romances on Kindle, which is why I'm like, maybe I should just get Kindle Unlimited because all of these would have been zero dollars. <laughs> Oops. So there are three rules for surviving the Fae. Never cross the border into their lands, never strike a bargain, and never fall for the enemy. And of course, Lark breaks all three rules. <laughs> she is chased across the enchanted border and basically forced into the land of the Fae where she is caught by the ruler of the sky. With his cunning words, he tricks her into a bargain and so she is stuck in the land of Fae for 13 days as she navigates his maze of crooked bridges, deceptive stairways, and of course devious inhabitants. But the deeper that Lark ventures into the land of the solitary Fae, the more she becomes entangled in their ruler's web of desire and passion. I mean, of course, it just looks like another fun little steamy Fae romance, which is my thing. <laughs> I'm so excited to read all these and then like bring back what I thought about all of them. So definitely keep an eye out in the future for more. And I also, let me know if you want to see more of like this type of video. I can make it a series because there's so many of them out there. 
that of course I can't read all of them and I can't talk about all of them in a single video because that would take hours but I definitely as I see more that catch my interest I definitely want to bring them to everyone's attention so that everyone can you know go find the ones that they like so let me know if you want to see it more down below in the comments but I'm not done yet. I don't know why I'm doing like my outro, but I still have a few more books to talk about. <laughs> Next up is Daughter of No Worlds by Carissa Broadbent. And this is the first book in the War of Lost Hearts series. And the second book being Children of Fallen Gods. And this one seemed really interesting. Her life for freedom, her blood for love, her soul for vengeance. Tisana was ripped from her homeland as a child and has learned to survive on nothing but her wit and a touch of magic. However, the night she tries to buy her freedom is a night that she barely escapes with her life and she ends up leaving her best friend behind in the process. Desperate, Tasana travels to the Order, a powerful organization of magic wielders, and she tries to gain power and influence in order to free her best friend. However, in order to join their ranks, she must complete an apprenticeship with Max Antarius Farleon, I think. Um, a reclusive firebender who actually hates everything that the Order stands for. The Order's intentions are cryptic, and even more dangerous are Tasana's growing feelings for Max Antarius. <laughs> but Tasana will stop at nothing to save those that she left behind, and even if it means wielding death itself. Spicy. And the last book on this list is A Whisper in the Dark by Jesse Elliott and KJ Sutton. And this one is vampires, which finally some vampires have made an appearance on this list. Charlotte Travesty lives a life of luxury, wanting for nothing because she is born into a family of royal vampires. All she has to do is survive her awakening, a ceremony that every vampire goes through upon their coming of age. But the night of her awakening, everything changes and she is cast from the royal family and basically thrust into the underbelly of the city, where creatures called weepers rule the underground, but there is even more than that to fear. And soon, Charlie must make alliances with the very humans that despise her and her family and their vampire overlords if she has any hope of surviving. And these are like almost novellas. I think they're pretty short and there's a few of them in the series. Um, I don't know how many there are total, but again, like it seems really fun. And fam I mean, like who doesn't love vampires? Come on. So there you have it. There are just some 10 fantasy romances that I want to read and that I think other people should read. And like I said, if you have any recommendations for other fantasy romances that you've read, let me know down below in the comments. And I mean, like it sometimes can blend into the area of paranormal romance as well, which I also enjoy. So yeah, just like let me know if you have any recommendations for me, if you want to see more in this series, because I just think it's really fun. There's so much that's independently published on Kindle that like doesn't get traditional media hype because they are not you know, published through the big publishing houses. So I think it's really interesting to find these like hidden gems of a book and especially like in this romance I just think it's like fun to have like fantasy and like steamy elements and romance all together so that's why I'm really excited about the series that I'm doing on my channel and talking about it and I definitely will be giving some updates in the future about what I thought about these books and hopefully doing maybe another installment in this video series if you would like more recommendations so yeah if you like this video don't forget to like comment and subscribe and have some fun read some books and I'll catch you guys in the next one